Hi guys, it's Elisa with Fusion DIY. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I take old discarded furniture that I find on the side of the road or things that people give me or things that I pick up in a thrift store and I make them over and resell them in my booth located at the Pickers Junction, 141 East Broad Street in Quakertown, Pennsylvania. So in this video, I'm taking a table, a sofa table, that I found about two years ago on the side of the road. And this poor thing, you'll see, it needed a lot of help, but I'm thrilled with the way it turned out. So let's get to the video and I hope that you enjoy it. So here's the table. You can see that it's in rough condition. It definitely had a lot of scratches and some of the veneer is missing on the top. It was burned in a couple of places and it had this red mark. I don't know what that was. The legs were very wobbly. So I used my dad's antique clamps to clamp it and they worked like a charm. Look at the detail in the curves of those upright supports. Aren't they beautiful? And look at the detail in the sides. They just don't make furniture like this anymore. And there's another look. So the first thing I did was I filled in the burn holes. And then once that was done, I gave it two coats of Zinsser primer. And it sat for a while because I had no room in my booth for it. So then I gave it a coat of Waverly chalk paint, believe it or not. And this chalk paint really did a nice job on this table. So I will give it, this is the first coat over the primer and I had absolutely no bleed through whatsoever. There's been a lot of comparisons to Waverly chalk paint to other chalk paints. And I have to tell you, this did a really great job. Once it dried, I noticed that there was a piece of veneer on the table that had lifted. And so I took some clamps, again, my dad's clamps, and I glued it with my tight bond glue and I let it set overnight. And the next morning when I came back and I took them off, the it was perfect. It was in perfect condition. So that tight bond really did an excellent job. So here I'm just giving it a second coat of the Waverly chalk paint. And I apologize for the glare. Um, it was a sunny day and I was trying to take advantage of that, but it just looks like it's a very hazy um, picture there. Nonetheless, uh, I did give it the two coats. The top I only gave one coat. And then when that was dry, I took my Mod Podge and I spread an even layer of Mod Podge all over the top of this table. I let the Mod Podge dry. It took about an hour to an hour and a half for it to dry completely. And then I was ready to move on to the next step. This decoupage paper is a Jamie Ray vintage decoupage paper that I actually got from my stockist who happens to be the woman that owns the Pickers Junction in Quakertown. And uh, I've used this paper before on a previous table, sofa table, and I absolutely love this. There was really nothing and I had been looking for a couple of years uh, once I started working on the table to try to find something that I thought would work on there, but nothing really compared to this paper. So um, if you have a stockist that handles the JRV decoupage papers, um, you can definitely ask them for this one. I believe it is still in uh, production and um, it just turns out great. So what I'm doing now is because I want to put two pieces, two sheets together, 
I'm taking a brush, dipping it in water, and I'm just making a line and I'm then gently tearing away the paper so that there is not such a stark line between the two pieces of decoupage paper. And this is a, a fairly common technique and it's amazing that the, the two pieces just kind of blend into one another. You really can't tell that there's a seam there at all. Now that that's done, I am going to take my second piece of decoupage paper and I am going to dry fit it to the first piece. And I wanted the first piece to be the top layer. I mean, there's a little bit of an overlap, but not a whole lot. But I was trying to match up the paper so that it was very hard to distinguish one page from the next. So trying to fit the the picture together and so that it made some sense was really what I was aiming to do here. Then I grabbed my parchment paper and an iron and now remember, the decoupage medium has dried, so I'm going to set my iron on a hot setting. Typically, I set it for cotton, in between a cotton and a linen, which is a hot iron, no steam whatsoever. And then I'm taking a piece of parchment paper and I'm going to tear off a piece and I'm going to lay it on the table. And that is gonna be your barrier between your paper and your iron. You don't want to iron directly onto the paper because the ink will come off on your iron. So the parchment paper acts as a natural barrier and it just makes it that much easier and cleaner to decoupage the paper to your project. So this was the tedious part about the project, just trying to match up the paper uh, so that it was very hard to distinguish that there was any kind of a separation between the two pages. So it took some time for me to finagle things and move things around. And once that was done, then I grabbed my parchment paper, which had fallen on the, on the floor, and I took my iron and I got to work. Now this is in real time. I did not speed up this video right here because I wanted you to be able to see how much time I spend going over the piece of parchment paper. Again, remember you're heating up the Mod Podge that's now on the tabletop and it's adhering the paper to the table. So you just go slow, move back and forth and pay attention to the corners. Make sure that you get those corners down and spend a little bit of a few extra seconds on each of the corners so that the paper does not come up. I had forgotten just how nice this method of decoupaging actually works because what it does is it eliminates the creases and there's no wrinkles there's absolutely no wrinkles in this paper at all initially when you do it you might have a wrinkle or two but as your decoupage medium cools the wrinkles go away
So now this is where I paid also a little bit of extra attention because this is where the two pieces of decoupage paper will meet and I wanted to make sure that that seam was completely adhered. I've got to tell you that this is such an easy method of decoupaging and there is no mess. It takes a little bit of time, granted, but the results that you get are just incredible. And you'll see when I lift this parchment paper, that seam that was in the middle where the paper was folded is now gone. Okay, so while I was putting this parchment paper on, it obviously shifted and you can see that there is a piece of the table down there that did not get any decoupage paper. But being a DIYer, we know that that is not the be all and end all of this piece of furniture. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of decoupage paper that somewhat closely matches. Now initially I tried to just take an end piece of the paper and when I laid it down on the table, I realized that there was way too much white space in that piece. And you could tell, you could definitely tell that it had been pieced. And so I decided then to take another piece of the decoupage paper and use that instead. So I cut it a little bigger than what I knew I needed because I wanted to tear the edge to make sure that it was not as uh, visible uh, and also because I knew I was going to be sanding off the edge to give it a clean edge and so uh, I'm going back and I'm taking the iron and I'm going to go again over that piece and iron out the fold lines and here is where I'm giving that a little bit of extra attention. So it's really hard to see that there was ever a correction made there. And I'm absolutely loving how this looks. I'm running my hands over it just to make sure that there's no wrinkles and there's nothing. So I was very, very happy. And over here where the correction was made, um, you can barely notice that there was ever any kind of a, a fix, which is the way that we want it. So once that was done and the, the Mod Podge and everything was cool, I went back with my sand paper and I am sanding off the edges to reveal a very clean and um, even edge all the way around the table. Just remember when you're using this method, you want to use a downward stroke so that you don't pull up any of the edges of your decoupage paper. I 
I go back and I look at where I married the two seams and it is almost impossible to tell that there is a seam there at all, right? It really turned out great. And look, at you can't even tell that there's a wrinkle, there's no fold lines, nothing. I love it. And here's a quick video of the finished project. The only thing I need to do now is give it two coats of polyurethane and then it is going into my booth at the Pickers Junction. So what did you think of that transformation? I am absolutely amazed at how well this table turned out and I've used a method that I haven't used in quite a long time. So it's always good to keep your skills current, right? I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber and the notification bell so that each time I release a new video, you'll be notified. Once again, thanks for joining me today and I hope that you have an awesome week and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.